Welcome everybody. In this video we're going to make a live histogram in Excel 2010. In the last video we went over how to use Excel's standard histogram feature but we noticed a problem which was that the histogram that was made was static. So what we'd like to do is to make a histogram that's not static. And the way we're going to do that is to get Excel to count how many times we get each of the numbers in our histogram table. So for example for our lucky number 7 we need to count how many times we get it. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on this page and we'd need to go from all the way from here down to row 6002 to count the last lucky number 7. Okay so to do that we need a function and if I hover and then click on the insert function item icon we can type in a search for count and when I hit enter you get a bunch of different choices and here we have the function that we want count if it counts the number of cells within a range that meet the given condition or criterion if I click OK I get the function arguments window and here's an input box for the range and if I click the selector tool I can then left click drag and I could go all the way down to row 6002 but I'd rather just type in the number 6002 here and then click on the selector tool again to come back and the criteria that we have for counting is simply that the number is 7 so I'm just going to click on the cell that contains 7 in my histogram table and then click OK and Excel inserts a function and the function here is count if and the blue range here is goes with the box that we had and F7 here is our con criteria or condition which is just the number 7. So that's pretty cool and you'll notice that when I hit delete it does update. So under, unlike the built-in histogram feature this count function actually count if function actually does count. Now if I copy upwards you'll notice that there's a problem. We get these hash refs. Why do we get them? Well, it's not a reference to Twitter. What it's telling us is that there's a problem with our function and it's in the range. The range is not right. It's going outside of the spreadsheet. So let's see why that happened. Our original number 7 is referring to a range in this blue box. The next one up, the blue box you'll notice has moved up one and that's not what we wanted to happen and that's why we got an error. So let's go back to the original one and make it so the box doesn't move and the way to do that is to type in a dollar in front of the D and a dollar in front of the 3. And another way to do that for the second thing that also needs a dollar in front of it is to hit, hit the F4 key on a PC which automatically puts in $D$2006 and if I hit enter it doesn't change this cell very much but when I copy it it now copies properly and I can then also copy down that way and let's just check that it's working correctly in cell 12 here so if I click here you'll notice it's re correctly referring to the cell next to it for the criteria but the range is remaining fixed which is what we wanted Okay, so we now have a histogram table that's working and is live, we'll notice. So that's pretty cool. So now let's make a graph. And I'd like to do this using the template that we made in the first video of this series. So if I left click drag across the data, I can go insert and then scatter, markers only, and then change the chart type, put in our template of markers only and then click OK and now I have a nicely formatted chart but this is not the same kind of chart as the one that Excel made so what I would like to do is change the chart type again and make it a column chart and now we do have a chart that looks like the one that Excel made but unlike Excel's this one is now live Oh, and you'll notice that these this axis title was moving and the reason why is that the number before it was a thousand then it went up to uh, 1200 what I'd like to do is actually make that fixed so it doesn't change so let's go format axis change the uh, axis options maximum from auto to fixed at 1200 so now our chart doesn't change when we do that let's tidy it up and 
put in all the things so that we know what this uh, is a histogram of. So if I click down here, I'm going to type in uh, a good name for this. Number rolled R, a good pirate letter. And on the Y axis, I'm going to type in frequency F. And for the title, I want to put in something descriptive, histogram of 6,000 dice rolls. Okay, so what I'd now like to do is to reformat this graph a little bit. We don't actually need the legend, so I'm going to delete that, right click and hit delete. And if I click on the series and then right click on the series, I get format data series. And what I'd like to do, let me just move this over so you can see what I'm doing. If I move it over this, the slider over this way, I get a larger gap. If I move it back this way, I get a smaller gap. And what I'd like to do is have a gap that has no gap. And the reason for that is that we now have a histogram where the area under the graph tells us how many dice were rolled. And if I hit delete, you'll see that it's still updating correctly and Excel's histogram is still not. Okay, so that's pretty fun. So before I finish the video, let's do a couple of other things with the spreadsheet before we go. One of the things we could do is change the histogram. So instead of being two dice, we could make it just be one. So I'm going to delete the formula in here and just make it be the sum of one dice. And I'm going to change my heading just to go with that. And then if I move my cursor from the open cross to a close cross over here and then double left click, it updates all of the data in the spreadsheet and we get a histogram of a single dice. And you'll notice that we get an even number approximately of numbers one through six, which is what you would expect. So now what I'd like to do is to actually do another experiment, which is to roll um, numbers of dice from one through five. Uh, but before I do that, I'd like to update the histogram table. And the way to do that is, here it goes, what I want to do is make it longer. So I'm going to highlight two rows and then copy down. I want to copy down to 31 because the maximum number you can get on five six-sided dice is five sixes, which is 30. So we want one extra one. And then what I want to do is I want to update the chart so that it actually graphs all of those numbers, even though they're zeros right now. And to do that, I can click on the series and then left click, left click on the corner of this thing. And we want to make it go down to the end of the data that we want to plot and then do the same thing for the other one. And it's actually really important that you make these two boxes match up with each other. If you get a weird graph, it's quite often because somehow these two things aren't matching correctly. OK, so now we have our single dice being rolled and we've got a histogram of the number of rolls for just one dice. Now what I want to do is insert some more rolls. So I'm going to click on column C and click insert three times. One, two, three. That gives us three more fresh columns and I can update the headings by left click dragging across the column headings and they're now automatically labeled one through five which is what we want and I need some more dice to be rolled in here so left click drag across there and now to make this copy down on the table I need to left click drag here and then double click and that automatically fills in the whole table and now what I want to do is I want to change this cell to make a sum and there's actually a function in Excel called sum that does exactly that. So I'm going to type in sum and then I can left click drag over the numbers that I want. If I wanted to do five, I could go there, but I'm going to make it just one just to start off with because I want to check that it works correctly. So if I hit close bracket and enter, I now have the function the way I want it to be. If I double click, I should get a fresh roll of all the dice, but the histogram should stay the same and it does. So then what happens if I start inputting, uh, changing the histogram to do to roll one through five dice. So here we have one. If I click here and now left click on this guy, I can make it do two. So the first one is now two. I hit enter. And then if I click on here and double click, I'll get my histogram for two dice, which is the same histogram we had before, but it's been sort of smushed a little bit because we made our axis bigger. So that's pretty cool. How about three? Well, if I left click up here and then left click drag across, hit enter and, and then go back and double click, 
you'll see that we now get a curve that's starting to spread out and become more like a normal curve. And if I do that again, and now roll four dice, hit enter, and then double click, you'll see that the curve moves over even further. And if I hit delete a couple of times, you'll see that it's what the distribution looks like. It changes every now and again. Changes every time, actually. And then the last thing that we wanted to do was to make it five dice. So if I go here and then hover over the corner and then left click drag across, hit enter, and then go to here and hit double click, we now have a histogram of Excel rolling 6,000 rolls with five dice each. So Excel's rolling 30,000 dice for us every time. It's kind of cool, really. And so there's our histogram. It looks nice. It actually looks like a Bell normal curve. And it turns out that in probability, there's a theorem that explains why this starts to look like a Bell normal curve. And it's called the central limit theorem. And it says if you add up a bunch of random things, like our five dice that are being added up, and then you make a distribution of the sum of those, if you add up enough of them, the distribution starts to look like a normal distribution, a normal Bell curve, or physicists might call it a Gaussian distribution. Okay, so now that we've got our live histogram, let's just talk a little about what you can use it for. Well, because we're counting discrete things like our lucky number seven, this histogram only works if the categories are discrete things, like a number, seven or eight, or letters, so you could use this for letter grades, but it won't work if the things that you're counting are coming from a continuous distribution real valued numbers. And in the next video, we'll go over how to do a histogram of real valued numbers. Okay, so I think we'll uh, finish there. And let me just remind you of what the plan was. The plan was to make a live histogram in Excel 2010 of our two six-sided dice, and we've successfully done that. And what I'm going to do now is I'll post the video and the spreadsheet on my webpage at circle4.com slash biophysics, and you should look for the videos link near the top of the page.